Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and boy am I in serious bad movie mode, because not only did I just review The Room earlier, although at least The Room is better than this, I'm about to review yet another film that is just as bad as, as The Room, but actually, it's far worse than The Room. It's a movie that was made as I go trip down to memory lane, back in the early 90s, 1991 was the year, the year where it actually made its debut for Salute Your Shorts, the classic uh, camp show that came out on Nickelodeon, which was awesome by the way. It's also the debut of the TV show Drexel's Class, I, I remember that show too as well. Also made its debut was the movie that Disney had made after The Little Mermaid called Beauty and the Beast. Classic film, by the way, and awesome too. And I also love films like What About Bob and all these other films that came afterwards. And of course, we even had that bizarre film, Nothing But Trouble, with uh, Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, and Demi Moore. But you get the idea. There was a film I would say was enough for me to go straight down to the toilet if I felt like I needed to go straight down. Because I saw a movie that was so awful, so bad, I had to waste my time looking at the clock or my watch to say, when is this movie going to be over? This was one of those movies, and believe it or not, it stars one of the biggest popular rappers that came back in the 90s, just when um, Tupac Shakur and all these other guys came along, although at this rate, MC Hammer was one of the biggest ones that came to the table. We ended up having a star named Vanilla Ice. And I have to say, in this sense, he was the 90s version of Justin Bieber. Yes, just as much as I can't stand that hack that we have today, Vanilla Ice was bad enough. Although Eminem started to join in too, but at least Eminem has his ways. Though he does sometimes act like that. But Vanilla Ice is one of them. It's just... He's just your typical guy who just wants to go around doing what he does best. Sampling a classic 80s song known as Under Pressure by David Bowie and the band Queen. Which has a song that I, I really enjoy that has that beat, you know, this guitar sound. And use it as a sample of one of his one-hit wonders known as... Ice, ice, baby. Do 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 do. Ice, ice, baby. Stupid. But on the other hand, though, he did have a song that was from the movie Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2: The Secret of the Ooze, came out the same year as this piece of shit movie that I saw, where he actually said the song, Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go, Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go, Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go. I like that song better than Ice Ice Baby. And though this movie, as I would say, is a disgrace. At this rate, this was a ripoff of a classic 50s film. I believe it was the 50s, yeah. Called The Wild Ones that stars a young Marlon Brando. But for the most part, it does seem like a ripoff of Rebel Without a Cause in that sort of way. Yeah, it, it's not very pretty to sit through. It's like a mind-numbling music video of a classic film gone wrong. Yeah, I know, The Wild Ones is a classic film, but this is stupid. This movie is so bad that it, it's almost enough to become a forgettable piece of trash. And by the way, the movie is called Cool as Ice. Which might as well be called Cool as Shit. Yeah, because that's what the title should have been called. And the director of this mess is by David Kellogg. 
Yep, he's the same director who gave us that horrible redemption of a classic 80s cartoon that I grew up with called Inspector Gadget. Yeah, can you believe that? You know, he gave us this piece of shit before he ruined one of my favorite shows of all time. It's just amazing. But anyway, let's get right to it because I want to, you know, destroy this movie half to death. Anyway, it stars Vanilla Ice, <laughs> who is the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, ice points. Christian Minter, John Haynes Newton, Michael C. Quills, who happens to be the, the TV father from the TV show Family Ties and all the Tremor series, and Kenny Clark. So, well, this is going to be the biggest one to sift through and review this, but here it goes. The movie begins when Johnny Van Olen, a carefree rapper who drifts from city to city, performing with his crew at a nightclub, who is run by a background sauntress, Naomi Campbell, playing a song called Coolest Ice, a.k.a. Everybody get loose. It, oh, yeah, right. But when the club closes for the night, Johnny receives a phone number from a female audience member. The crew that then heads out on their motorcycles, that includes his yellow written with blue motorcycle that he rides on, he heads to the next show. But while the group passes through a small town, the rebellious John falls for an honor student by the name of Kathy Winslow, who's played by Christian Minder. The crew is stranded in the town after a member's motorcycle had broke down and had went to a local repair shop. And after waiting for repairs, Johnny has used the opportunity to see Kathy, but unfortunately, she has already have a boyfriend named Nick, who is played by John Haynes Newton, who buys Kathy to dump, hence the name, drop that zero, and get with the hero. <laughs> what the fuck? Acting on the tip from Kathy's younger brother Tommy, Johnny shows up with his crew at a local club frequented by Kathy and her friends. But no one had seemed to notice that they are enjoying the live music that they were playing in the club. But Johnny and his crew, on the other hand, decided to perform a musical number called People's Choice by unplugging other bands' instruments and taking control, shocking the audience and ending with Johnny sweeping Kathy off her feet. On billions to know to Kathy, however, she is stalked by two strange men in a car. She is saved by Johnny, who obviously had to take her home to her parents. Nick's friends, on the other hand, had to attack the rapping biker who fights back, leaving Nick and his buddies unconscious and himself in the hospital with a broken nose. And prior to this, though, Kathy's father, Gordon, has become very suspicious of Johnny and warns Kathy to stay away from him because they can't trust any strangers. Her father insists to have her safety as well as the Winslow's family themselves. So the next day, Kathy goes for a ride with Johnny against her father's wishes. Yep, and they, there's a scene where they go around at a construction site, swinging around and so on and so forth. As things were going wrong, you know, Gordon, under the pressure of his wife Grace, played by Kim Clark, reveals to Kathy the secret of his past. He was actually once a police officer before he met her mother. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And while they're in the run for two corrupted cops, of course, who own the money for Winslow, they were able to escape using fabricated documents explaining about all the secret life that Kathy has been hidden over the years. Not to mention the fact that later they kidnapped son Tommy when Johnny was up to save the day to stop these creeps from kidnapping him and, and threatening the entire family before everything's too late. That is until and they finally make love together, and so on and so forth. And frankly, that's what the movie was about, and I don't give a shit about this ridiculous movie that this was going on for. Everything was shot in a very awkward way. It felt like I'm watching Alice in Wonderland 
in rebirth when it comes to those psychedelic scenes such as when they were at the house they were about to have some food there was like a huge salt and pepper you know and a huge table everything all the set design that they put in this in this big house just seems to go on then there were some scenes with that started to move in fast motion slow motion and all that yeah it speeds up so fast I couldn't believe what was going on it really is a bad music video all by itself even for a film like this um, yep it does have your typical screenplay your typical cliche of, of movie history where the boyfriend is always the jerk and no matter what the hero will always save the day because you know let's face it they always think she thinks that Johnny had more chemistry with Kathy than, than the boyfriend does. You know, Nick. Yeah, I get that a lot too. It, I mean, that scene's been recycled many times in many movies already. Um, yeah, I, I'm always getting tired of that cliche. Uh, uh, but let's face it, this movie sucks. It, it sucks so bad, I could not believe I had to sit for this mess. I felt sorry for Michael C. Gross that he agreed to be in this piece of shit movie. I mean, he deserved better than this. I mean, this is the same actor who played the father in the TV show Family Ties. Come on, guys. Give him a break. Oh, and by the way, he does look very unrecognizable, too. With the glasses. I did kind of find it hilarious, though, because after reading all these trivia notes involving this production of this film, I found out that actress Gwyneth Paltrow was originally going to play the girl in the movie. I, yeah, she was going to play Kathleen Rinslow in the film. I couldn't believe my eyes, but if, if Greta Paltrow had to star in this mess, I would imagine how her career is going to end up being in. Thank God she picked better roles as years follow. <laughs> but that happens to all these other great actresses out there. It happened to Anna Naki Rose, who starred in a film called From Justin to Kelly, and guess what she wants it then? in movies like Dream Girls and The Princess and the Frog. It, it happens sometimes. But on the other hand though, I had to say, cool as ice is cool as shit. That's what it is. It's a piece of shit, not worth watching. I don't give a shit about Vanilla Ice anymore since he's now hosting, <laughs> surprisingly enough, a home improvement show that's on DIY Network. Go figure. Yeah, he, he sold himself to the devil. <laughs> Although he did once try to become, you know, a punk rocker before. So that's <laughs> that's funny. And I gotta admit, you know, he did a good job trying to play one of those rather strange manager of a of a railhouse like music store in that one movie called The New Guy. Yeah, I, I would take that for granted, but let's face it, this film sucks. I hated it. It's dumb, ridiculous. The music sucks too. I mean the dancing sucks. Everything sucks. <laughs> I'd rather stick a needle in my eye than have to sit for this mess again. And don't worry, I would never do that because it's dangerous. But that's how I felt when I saw this. So anyway I give Cool as Ice the legendary zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye! And yes, Vanilla Ice sucks. <laughs>